And Mustafa's button rays will look less credible than a news story from realtruthernews.org. Ike defends. Wow, what a flop. Top set for Canet, Royal flush draw for Ike. Schultz now king nine suited, another combination we like to play. The sort of theme here obviously is that we're looking for playability from early position. Delaney now, pocket tens in the big blind. I think Delaney's gonna play it chill, just goes for the flat, especially facing that earlier open from Schultz. And look at the flop. Talk about playability, guys. King nine suited, absolutely drills it. Okay, so a bet and a call here, guys. 125 into a pot of 550 called. Board pairs, a little bit more opportunity to make bows now for Delaney, a 10, a deuce. Will do it. And I don't think this is where you slow down. You don't want another diamond to come and slow down the action. You want to still get value from the Jack X, where a diamond would slow them down if they didn't have a diamond draw, for example. So two calls now. This pot's getting pretty big at this stage. Two million in the middle. Schultz got to be thrilled about this. But the 10 on the river, that's 10's full for Delaney. The absolute catastrophic outcome. Oh, man, this is really savage. Absolutely brutal river for Schultz. I mean, he can't not bet this, right? I mean, the check here is just so sweet. Honestly, Delaney's done so well. No, there's no chance. You can never miss a bet here in 100 years. Schultz has about 4 million behind him, and the pot's already 2 million. 1.5 million. That's a three-quarters pot river bet. Delaney just going to double check. He does have tens full. I mean, it's just an all-in, right, guys? I mean, does he ever just go, I don't want to get stacked by jacks and just flat? It's already a huge pot. I feel like that might be way too tight at this stage. You're literally losing to quads or jacks, deuces or jacks, and that's it. Take your time, Delaney. This might be the most important pot that you play at this stage in the tournament. I think he can just go all in. He's all in. Oh, wow. Oh, Schultz is in such a bad spot now. So Schultz has to decide whether to call it off for 25 bigs with the second nut flush on a paired board, knowing that you've got Henri Casper with a 10 big blind stack. Oh, my God. This is crazy. This is absolute madness. Yeah. Give him all the cards, buddy. You really need to go, gonna go into the tank for this. I think one of the only things he might be thinking is he's probably not going to do this with a weaker flush given the way the board runs out, especially that we're playing for such huge sums on the final table. So it's not like you're going to get him here if he has 5-4 of diamonds, and they probably would have played the hand differently on a previous street anyway. So he's repping nothing, or he's repping a boat. There's no chance a player like Delaney would overplay a hand like 6-7 of diamonds or the like. At this stage, with so much on the line, this is absurdly difficult, but can Schultz find the fold? I mean, this is where you use all the time back cards, right? I know you put them all forward. And that's a pass. That's wow. a fold. Excellent fold. Lays down the flush, gets away from it. it yeah. Meanwhile, Brian Delaney takes the chip lead up to 10.6 million. Honestly, guys, get your claps in the chat for Schultz there. That was a world-class fold. Honestly, what a horrible spot. Well, this hand starts with 9.8 of diamonds for Arthur Conan under the gun. And he raises to 40,000. We are still at the 10.20 blind level. Hold it around to online qualifier Erkan Sernmetz, who's got sixes in the cutoff. Makes the call. Ramon Kalidas folds the button. Mark Foggin in the big blind. There's 9-7 offsuit. He calls as well, and we are going three-way to the flop. That flop is 10-7-6. Wow. With two <laughs> diamonds. Street oh flash my. potential for Conan. How? <sighs> oh, man. Wow, just checks the flop here. Very interesting. 
Let's see if Cern Metz follows Joe Stapleton's advice. Always bet your set. Oh, yes, he does. Of course, he'll bring it up this one time. It's going to hurt him. <laughs> yeah, Cern Metz certainly doesn't want two opponents that are in this hand to get a cheap or free look at all of the different draws that could be possible with those straights and flushes potentially coming in on later streets that could hurt the strength of his hand and kill his action as well. But Foggin coming along for that bet. Yeah. But I think, will this be the time they hear from Conan or is Conan going to reel them in a little bit more? So 65,000 yeah, has become 225,000. Is 225,000 yeah, going to become 1.2 million? <laughs> I, I was just going to touch on that, Stapes, is just the fact that now for Sonmez, again, because of that factor of Foggin coming along, you don't necessarily just want to flat here. I mean, yes, it looks incredibly strong out of Conan, but you have a hand that, of course, you want to protect and get value from. Sonmez calls, and I imagine we'll see Foggin fold. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So we go heads up to the turn. So many sickos calling for the Ten of Diamonds. It's the Jack of Hearts. The board gets straightier, and I wonder if that might slow down at CERN Mets. 275. So having check raised the flop, Conan bets 275,000 on the turn. Sernmetz calls again, and we go to the river. 1.2 million in the middle. He's got to be concerned about set over set here as well, of course. So it's not just the pure 8 9 that he's concerned about at this stage. And it's the Jack of oh Diamonds. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. So it is the flush for Conan, but it does pair the board. No straight flush, no street flash action for Conan. So he is losing to the Man. full house of Cernmetz. He does check. Wow. I understand, though. I definitely understand why he's concerned at this stage. Would he ever check sevens full or tens full? I think the answer is absolutely no. At this point, Sonmez must understand that he has the best hand, right? There's no chance there would be a check here with sevens or tens. SPR is so, so small. So Conan is not in a spot here where he has to make a decision for his tournament life. No, and I think Conan is also fearful not only of the boats, but of course, you know, Ace Ten of Diamonds yep. is a possibility, right? Yep, absolutely. That's a hand that would have called pre, called the check raise, and would have had to continue with all that equity on the turn. And Conan gets away from it. He makes the fold. <laughs> Class laydown from Conan. Six four of diamonds, and just a call. Ivanovich with Ace Trey checks. He gets to underrep his hand now. He looks a little vexed. Well, how about this for a flop? Trips for Ivanovic. Flush draw for Berniers. Dimitri leads for 150,000. I think this lead will get a lot of fold, but Bernius has a draw he can't fold. He calls. The turn card. The ten of spades. Abanovich now a huge favorite. He's 84% to win this hand. He both loves his hand and is in love with his hand. He fires again. 415,000. Bernie is still playing his draw. And he's going to semi-bluff with it. He raises to 1.4 million. He is really banking on Dimitri not having an ace. Probably wonders why Dimitri would lead the flop and not just check. Abanovich responds with a three bet. 
2.4 million. Not really sure what's going on here, but we know Bernie Ace is not afraid to get it in, and I think Dimitri is trying to induce him to do just that. Sven, hold on to your potatoes. All in. There's the shove and the call. Showdown with one card to come. Because, yeah. Bernie is, has seven outs, seven cards he can hit to win the EPT Dublin main event. It's a nice spot to be in, but generally when you are in this spot, you do want a better than 16% chance of getting there. Abanovic set for the double up, unless Bernie's hits a diamond. Crucially, not the three of diamonds or the ten of diamonds. The river card is a diamond, but it pairs the board. Honestly, it fooled me too. A full house for Abanovic. Aye, aye, aye. Nice answer. Ah, nice river. Well, Ike is in the big blind in this hand. It's been folded around to Mustafa Kanet on the button, and he's got aces. You know, it only looks like he's dressed up. He's got shorts on under that. Kanet raises, makes it 125,000. Ike, who came second in the 2007 PCA main event, has jack eight off. And Mustafa's button raise will look less credible than a news story from realtruthernews.org. Ike defends. Very easy common defend for Ike. Wow, what a flop. Top set for Canet, royal flush draw for Ike. Pretty sick. Action check to the pre-flop aggressor. Canet continues for 125,000. With this super nut royal draw, Ike could sail off here. He just calls. I think it's probably because he's doing so bad against the king of clubs. The turn is the seven of clubs. Ike with the second nut flush. He is now a 77% favorite. Strange board, strange situation. Action's been checked to Kenneth. I mean, you got top set, but ugh. He checks it back. The rivers, the queen of hearts, pairing the board. That's a boat for Canet. That is a reassuring card. And this hand is about to be a mind melt. 590,000 in the middle. Canet the effective stack with 1.4 million behind. Looks like Ike's betting for value. 450k. Mustafa only need worry about a flopped royal and rivered quad, so my guess is he's going to be raising here all day, every day. All in. He shoves. Ah, oh, Ike is in a very interesting spot where he can only beat a stone bluff. And Mustafa's actually pretty dang likely to be sly in the family stone bluffing here. Cost Ike half of what he's got to call. You win. Yeah, let's it go. Show me the bluff. It'll be a lot of fun. Don't do it. Or do. I, I don't know why I care. The stuff of Canet, who won the first ever one day super high roller on the tour, chips up. And Martini looking down at 9 6 of hearts. This will be a totally standard raise heads up. He opens to 1.25 million. Kalilis with queen five in the big blind. And this would be a totally standard defend of the big blind heads up. With Kalilis calling, we go to the flop. All hearts, Martini flops a flush. And this is a cooler. Kalilis with second pair. Second pair, very strong in this situation. With the action check to him, Martini will continue for a million. Kalilas calls. The turn card 
is the Queen of Diamonds. Kalilis improves to trips. Very bad news when you improve the trips and you are still behind. This deck is frostier than a Canadian windshield. Second barrel coming from Martini. That's 4.6 million. Martini's actually bet so big that Ramon can't even really raise. They will be playing for stacks on the river more than likely. Kalilas calls to the river, which is the five of diamonds. That's a boat for Kalilas. He was 3% on the flop before catching running cards to make a full house. This deck is unthinkably cold. This is too ridiculous. Just when I think I've seen it all in poker, poker finds a way to get even more ridiculous. It's been checked to Martini. He shoves. Kalilas calls all in and he will double up. Martini can't believe it. What an insane run out. I don't even know what you say about a hand like that. Nobody played it bad. It was just set up for maximum pain. Yes, sir. Good job.